necessitated. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Out of the fog. If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today? Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first, particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again? In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices have a life shift and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is gonna happen and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea. And that's never gonna work. And who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, You'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's, or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes. Sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. You can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came... 
All right. If you are looking to reinvent life on your terms, if you are grieving, experiencing financial turmoil, career shifts, relationship problems, parenting, elder care, victims of abuse, breaking free from an addiction, or seeking an overall business and lifestyle redesign, then you may need a reboot. It is not size fits all. Just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's she Thanks for having me. Thank you. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest Nir Bashan. Um, from working with Hollywood and music stars like Woody Harrelson and Rod Stewart, Nir discovered something that may shock you these creative superstars aren't all that different from your eye it's just that they have mastered a method of repeatable and predictable creativity a type of creativity that anyone can learn and it turns out that that's the same type of creativity that can be used in business and careers as well Nir, Nir has taught thousands of leaders and individuals around the globe on how to harness the power of creativity to improve profitability, increase sales, and boost customer service, and ultimately create more meaning in their work. That formula is found in the Creator Mindset, a book which has been translated into two languages and released worldwide by McGraw-Hill Business in August of 2020. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. And um, I'd like to start off with asking now this show actually came about based on my new best selling book bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. I wrote it right before the pandemic. <laughs> and so <clears throat> it came out right on time. And then I got on um, invited onto the show. And next thing you know, I have 12 hours a week on the show. So um, and my own show. So that's how this started. So I like to start off by asking you if you have a time in your business or personal life that you can share with the audience where you experienced a tough situation and how you got back on track. Yeah, I mean, how long do we have, right? I think, I think that's the what you touched on is the key, right? It's what you do with those situations and how you move forward are really the guts of of ingenuity. And so uh, I had a company in Hollywood that failed miserably. It, it, we had a, a product out. It did well for a while. And then I didn't do any follow up. I did nothing to support that product through and literally went out of business because of it. And what I learned from it was not to do that again uh -huh. and to really uh, follow up with things and, and create auxiliary products and services around an offering and not to get complacent. I really learned how mm. not to get complacent. Mm, yes, so true. That is something. And when you're able to just pick up and start over again and be okay with that, <clears throat> that's when you have rapid success because it's like, it's all a learning and it's building on more success and preparing us for things we don't even know to expect, you know, what's next. So especially in business today. Definitely. Yeah. I think we live in a world where nobody wants to talk about failures. Everybody wants the next Instagram multimillionaire. Oh, you know, I posted three pictures and now I'm an influencer or a celebrity or whatever. But I, I think we need to start talking a little bit more about failure, a little bit more about how difficult the road actually is, mm -hmm. rather than just kind of glorifying somebody who's already made it. And, and that's kind of part of my uh, part of my mission, part of my life's work. 
Yes. Yeah. It's so important. And anybody that that's very successful has some kind of a story to share where they have gone through some very interesting times that, that built resilience and creativity into their life. And so I'd love to hear more about your creative process and how you um, came about that exactly and what the parts of that are. Yeah, definitely. So I think my approach had come from getting it wrong every single way humanly possible, right? I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, I got it right and I'm so great and look at me. I'm more like the opposite, right? Of, of having gotten it wrong every single way humanly possible. And I find that people who get it wrong and then look and see what happens and really sort of analyze it and, and take away from what has gone wrong tend to be the most creative because creativity to me is not about an instrument or art or, you know, sculpture or something like that. Creativity to me is all about the art of being able to solve problems that exist in our world today. And, and we have overdeveloped our analytical mind. We treat everything as numbers and spreadsheets and profit and loss and mm -hmm. quarterly reports. We've stopped connecting with that creative side of our brain. And we've just turned into a shell of our potential, a shell of what we could possibly do. And so I think people need to become more creative and mm -hmm. solve problems in different ways in order to elevate humanity. Yes, that's so true. Now, I'd love to hear a little bit about your experience in Hollywood and working with all these fun people. What was that like? So I worked in Hollywood for many, many years. It was shocking to me. I thought that all these people that I worked with, you know, amazing celebrities and stuff like that. They were special and oh, gee, they were artists and this and that. And almost everybody I worked with, unless they had an addiction problem or something like that, because some of them do, right. but the overwhelming majority of people were very disciplined. They had mm -hmm. a notepad. They would write down ideas and, and they were very organized about how to become creative and how to use that creativity. And I noticed patterns that it, uh, started to um, become evident. I noticed patterns in musicians too. I thought, oh, you know, I worked on a bunch of hip hop albums mm -hmm. in LA in the late nineties. So I had Cypress Hill and uh, KRS one and all these famous huge hip hop rap artists. And I would sit in the studio and I thought it was going to be a party. Sheila, like I thought mm -hmm. it was going to be a music video, right? A party and yeah. champagne flowing and this and that. And everybody was very disciplined. We started at 9 a.m., People went home at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a process. Every musician that I worked with, except one, had a process. They, you know, were organized. They knew what they were going to do that day. They had goals. They had an agenda. It turned out that creativity, the process, and it's something that anybody can learn. It's mm -hmm. not this mystical thing that, oh, I wish I was like Steve Jobs or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's about a discipline, wanting to <sighs> learn the steps and going off and doing it. Mm, yes, that's so true. And that's something, I mean, I grew up in, in California and Hollywood was like my backyard. And I actually was homeless from 10 to 13 and a half. And I, I was like there in Hollywood and I would wow. sleep on the benches in the Troubadour at night because my, my best friend had a boyfriend that worked there. Wow. Millions of years ago. I mean, that's how crazy it was. And to me, I got to know so many incredible people and, you know, bands that nobody heard of. And then the next thing you know, they're super famous, whatever, because I was just there all yeah. the time. And and I learned a lot. And you're right. Every famous or quote unquote famous person that that has success, whether that's in the in the music industry or all these other careers, they work some long hours. And when everybody else goes home, they're still working on it. <laughs> it's not the party. And like you said, it's the few that might have a, a situation where, you know, they're off and then they have a really good manager that's helping them keep on track or else it would fall apart. That's just the reality for sure. So Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's amazing. And, and I watch these musicians and I watch these actors and then later in life, I started doing other things, right? Not just Hollywood or music. And I noticed that there's patterns that you can apply mm -hmm. from Hollywood, from music that worked just as well in business. It was really incredible. And from that, I kind of gravitated toward a recipe of creativity. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm out doing now. I speak at conferences and do workshops with 
companies all over the world about, you know, okay, great. This creativity stuff is wonderful. Now, how do we do it? And that's kind of where I come in. Yes. Yes. I love that. So what would be some of the steps for somebody that feels like they're not as creative as they would like to be? So I think one of the things that your listeners and viewers can do right now, if they want to become more creative is a concept that I call the little victories, right? The little victories are all about cherishing and loving those little things that happen along the way. What ends up happening in most businesses is we set a three year or five year, a 10 year goal. And we march towards that goal. Like no, nothing else exists. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that there's little victories that occur along the way that might just steer you into a different direction. And being aware of the little victories and celebrating them are an incredibly valuable creative tool. Those little victories, Sheila, might take you somewhere completely different. Just yeah. like you, you you know, you were a, a, an author, you wrote a book, and all of a sudden now you're hosting, yeah. you know, this great syndicated show, and it's wonderful. Th those are all about the little victories setting you up in a way that you might not have known. And that's what creativity yeah. really does. It yeah. works on a tangential path, not an analytical path. Mm, that's so true. And now I know for myself personally, one thing I experienced in life over and I'm very creative, which is good. <laughs> and so in life, I've had lots of people, friends, loving family members, whatever, that I would say, here's my creative idea. And they'd be like, nope. And uh -huh. yeah, done, <laughs> you know, and so it, I, I, I mean, I remember a time where they told me it was impossible to like buy something. I said, I, I just want to own a place. And I had lost everything and this and that with, with uh, fire and all these things. And I said, no, I've got 35,000. I can, I can find a house in California. Well, I got a little cabin up Woolsey Canyon, not far to, from Topanga Canyon, 35,000. And then I was like, and I'm going to make money from it. And they're like, right. And, and I split it up and I was making six to 8,000 a month. I literally, I was, you know, waiting for money to come in. And I was like, okay, I'm going to hand paint it. I'm going to decorate it. I'm going to design it. And my friends were like, honey, just go like Sprouts is hiring right now. You can get a job, rent out a little apartment. You'll be good. <laughs> and, right. and I had the best intentions. And then, uh, you know, a couple months later, I'm making money and then I'm buying a big house and all of this other stuff. And they're like, you know, you're crazy, but, and you're a little out there, but you know how to make money. I, <laughs> And we'll never doubt you again. And I was like, thank you. So it is something that I had no fear. I was like, what do I got to lose? I have nothing to lose. I don't have much to work with. So what do I have to lose? And I just had fun. So, but there was work. Like I rolled up my sleeves and worked day and night, painting and cleaning and, you know, making it pretty with, with a budget that was stupid low to, to actually get it rented out. And it sold for... 298 three years later nice yeah so a nice I, return I, on investment i had cash flowed all that time so it was yeah. like that was and that's not my thing but i'm it's the creative thing it's not about property or design it's really you can apply that anywhere and and that's the thing that's really different once you realize that but there's always that time where people question you and you question yourself because of it. And you think, oh man, maybe <laughs> maybe I should go work at the grocery store. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's one of those things. How do you overcome that? Yeah, I listen, I think you're you're tapping on something really important here. The the self-doubt monster is what I call it in the book, is one of the strongest things that derailed humanity from reaching its rightful goals, right? I think we could have easily have cured cancer by now. I think we mm -hmm. could have landed a woman on Mars. We could have done, cleaned up the environment. There's amazing technologies that can clean the air. There's uh, some stuff that I, I saw at one of the recent trade shows where I was speaking at that can clean plastic out of the ocean. It's like a passive thing. It's like a big ring and it collects plastic and you, it has a beacon and a ship can come and empty the plastic. It's amazing, right? The technology, the innovation, yet, you know, that stuff is few and far between because most of us succumb to the self-doubt monster. We go, oh, I can't do this. And that's somebody else to do. And that's not my job. I'm not supposed to get a job at the supermarket. I'm mm -hmm. not supposed to solve you know, plastic in the ocean kind of problem. But 
when we do that, we're cheating ourselves out of that rightful place that humanity has to solve incredibly important problems in a creative way. Mm -hmm. And so I talk in the book about three techniques on how to deal with that self-doubt, which I have and everybody has. It just kind of comes out. Um, one of them is the waterfall technique where I talk about how you just try to imagine how water doesn't care what comes before it or after it. It just kind of is as it goes over. And I talk about getting a pen and writing it down, uh, writing down ideas as a waterfall technique. Um, and I kind of teach you how to do it in the book. And it's really about getting ideas out there without attaching any judgment to them or sure. pretense. And when you do that, you're able to quiet that monster down just a little bit. And it really is about doing things that quiet the monster. Um, detox. I talk about digital detox ah. in the book. Incredibly important, right? Mm -hmm. About taking, looking at your calendar and just taking five minutes a week, right? A week, five minutes and just scheduling time out. I mean, we're all, you know, busy nine to six every day, back to back to back, right? So you take five minutes out of one week. You can do it today, right? Your listeners and, and viewers, they can do it today. Just take five minutes out and block it out. And when you are in that five minute period, shut your computer down, shut your phone down and just veg out for a little bit. Right. And then every week increase that a little bit and a little bit more. And you're going to create zones where you can be more creative and you can come up with different ideas and really think about things instead mm -hmm. of going through life, doing, 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 doing. You can kind of stop for a little bit and say, OK, I'm going to give myself permission to quiet that monster and allow for ideas to come out instead of crippling self-doubt. Mm, that's so good. Now for me, I time block, especially with the show and recordings and all these different things that I do. Uh, I do consulting. So I have to have certain days where I do consulting and certain days where I teach my courses and then days I record the show. So it's, it's busy. And I started off with, oh, I have to turn my phone on. Do not disturb for the show for recording. Oh my gosh, I'm addicted to that now. I'm like, now we schedule time for calls or I work with people, you know, we text back and forth to figure something out, but I don't check only certain times of the day. And I have tripled my productivity and peace. And I have that time to go take a quiet walk or do whatever I want to do. And it just, it's just peaceful because I'm not being controlled by the outside, all these somebody else's fire that needs to be put out, which I appreciate, but I got my own. So it's just, it's addictive when you're able to turn off the everything. Well, yeah, you have to do it. Sheila, then, if you don't control your, your schedule, someone else is going to control it for you. For sure. And the news, I, I don't do a lot of news in the house. I have beautiful music that gets played in the house with a, the big screen TV has the music and the videos and all that so that there's a good energy. And there's something about the energy in an environment that shifts when people come over. They're like, oh, this is such a beautiful home. And it's it feels safe. It feels like I could just sit here and meditate or relax. Or, and, and they don't want to leave, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. But, but it's because it's a different... It's like I want to create those environments for myself and my family. I've got kids home now that because the universities, the dorms closed, all that good stuff. And it just it shifts the energy. You could just see it on the faces when people walk in and it's like, oh, yeah, I could sit here and read a book. I can relax, you know. And so that makes a big difference for those listening in who have employees. Maybe you're running a big business, the music, the the lighting, the all these things, the the way people are addressed, it affects everything. And the clients, the people you serve feel that, that energy comes out. And if there's angriness and, and, and uptightness or whatever, high pressure, like I literally was helping my daughter get a car <laughs> and we're, you know, shopping together and she's exchanging one for another, whatever. And so I'm going shopping with her on the weekends. And some of the dealerships we went to, it was like, oh my gosh, they, they like attack you when you get in. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people and what you're, you know, you're like, okay, you know, just back up everybody, let us breathe. And you could feel it's coming from the management and other places they're friendly and relaxed and, and they're making sales and you can see them writing up all these contracts uh, from other people's sales because of that. 
So it was really interesting that that little experiment <laughs> and we still haven't bought anything, but <laughs> one of these days she'll figure it out, but that's it. So that's, that's important. Now, what would you say, what, how would you advise people looking to be creative in this time where maybe they've had a shift in their business or career, especially right now, there's lots of things going on where maybe they walked away from a career because they didn't want to do whatever. And, uh, and we all know what that is, but, but we won't get into that, but, but whatever, if they need to be creative to like get food on the table and, and, and move forward until things are resolved, what would you suggest? Yeah. So th I think that, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And I think that exactly the case right now during COVID, it really is about leaving no stone unturned in your pursuit to solve problem. Mm -hmm. um, I, I consult with different groups and I remember d doing one with a, um, uh, a dry cleaning uh, franchise and they were, you know, near recharge $8 for shirt, $12 for skirt, blah, blah, blah. We have a, a thing. And I said, you know, are you willing to change? Are you willing to look into different models? And I said, yeah, you know, what, what are you thinking? And I said, I, it's got to come from you because creativity is something we're all born with, right? It, it, it's innate to our DNA, it's who we are. And mm -hmm. they, they, we started sort of spitballing ideas and I'm kind of pushing them outside of their comfort zone a little bit. But somebody came up with the idea, hey, let's go on a, on a lump sum model, right? So they looked at their invoicing, how they invoice customers and change that instead of an a la carte where we'll charge you for every item or whatever, it's going to be a lump sum monthly. And yeah. the business is doing incredibly well yeah. because people love lump sum monthly, right? They exactly. love to pay one thing every month, like on their Netflix or on their Hulu or whatever it is. They pay mm -hmm. once a month, they watch some time, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they watch nonstop and this business benefited from thinking creatively right now during COVID, you need to look at what's going on in your business. You need to look at what's going on in your career and leave no stone unturned creatively looking at that problem. Look at that problem from a bunch of different viewpoints and take nothing off the table of potential because yes. when you're able to think creatively, not just analytically about a problem, you unite the mind into one supercomputer, super mm -hmm. powerful computer yeah. that will allow you to look at problems and really come up with ideas that will work. Very true. And that, that brings me back to when I was young, 23, I opened gift stores, Montrose, California. I don't know if you know that area. <laughs> and that was my first, it was a 5,000 square foot. And then I had Sierra Madre, Pasadena, Burbank, all over the place. I had five. But when I started, I was 23. And I hired people that were like 50, 60, because, <laughs> you know, that they were experienced salespeople. And I would sit down with the group and we would have a breakfast and everybody, even the kids, I had a whole program for at-risk youth um, to go through over 200 kids went through the program. So everybody would sit at that table and we would create ideas and nobody was ever wrong. And sometimes the most creative idea came from maybe one of the kids or, you know, something like that. And that was how I had so much success because it wasn't me, it was us. And we're still friends today. We, I had that store, all those stores for 17 years and then closed and did teaching and, and now all this. But, <laughs> but in that time, that was it. It was not laughing at somebody's idea. And sometimes somebody's idea was kind of like, okay, that's not gonna work, but there's something about it. That one little creative piece that, you know, doubled the income for the month. And then we'd all have a big party and celebrate. So, <laughs> so that was, that was it, that, that creativity and just even think about families, if you're home and now you got your kids home, you're both parents are home working from home, all this, and it's different, have a time where you can sit down and throw out ideas together and honor the kids ideas. And you'll be surprised. They might resolve a situation um, on how to set up the house differently or whatever. <laughs> That's like, oh, now we have peace at home. Wow. And, and it came from the six-year-old or whatever. I right. mean, you don't know. But it's it's teaching. That's teaching the creativity uh, and allowing it so that you're not wrong. You know, yeah. Like, I mean, it will show you if it's not right. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. It, you got to really explore ideas all the way through and not attach to it a predetermined 
result, when we attach predetermined results to ideas, no matter where they come from, you're absolutely right, then we limit their ability to really shine. And uh, I talk a lot about in the book because of consulting with different people, I've noticed that there's a real need for that, right? There's kind of like, how do we do this? How do we get different feedback from different departments? How do we get everybody kind of on the same page? And it's it's really something that, that needs to get done. And it starts with leaving no uh, stone unturned. Mm -hmm. It really it continues with getting that feedback from all different departments and, and really expressing them, learning what they are and trying them out when appropriate. Yes. And I, I know this show is not censored, <laughs> although we can't say bad words. And so, you know, when people feel that it's not being censored and they're safe to say whatever they feel, especially during this crazy time without judgment with, OK, you know, that's where you are at. This is where I'm at. This is how I feel about whatever job I'm doing and and the store, the, the, the whatever they're working at. And so that's going to really help because that's the truth. They could say nice things because they don't want to get in trouble or they, you know, they don't want to be OK. I don't want to like rock the boat here, or complain that was the boss's idea or whatever. But really, that's what the boss needs. That's what I needed to hear running those businesses. I would actually pay people to secret shop before they invented secret shoppers. I was like, I just I'm looking at it here and I need you to show me your perspective because I can't see it anymore. And yeah. that, that was priceless. That would be the most valuable thing that I could do. And I would just change to whatever the, the clients needed, whatever people wanted, not what I thought people wanted. Cause that was like totally off when I was 23 and the, the community was mostly a demographic of, of older people. <laughs> it was like, you know, no. So I had to learn a lot. There were so many mistakes made every single mistake. Like you said, every mistake that was possible was made. And then you just keep you course correct. So, yeah. Yeah. So what advice would you have if maybe somebody listening in is trying to be creative and they've gone down one path that it was the wrong road It is not it's not working out? How do they course correct? Definitely. I'm with you 100 percent. I, I just don't believe that there's any wrong roads. Right. Mm -hmm. There's all roads lead to some goal that sometimes we know about. Sometimes we don't. I, I, I just did a, um, a talk with a financial services group. And somebody asked, you know, near um, you talk about how, you know, try to get things wrong and stuff like that. Well, if we get things wrong, then we go out of business and this kind of thing. So what do you advise on that? And it, I said, you know, the economy no longer tangent. It's no longer sort of simple, right? It's no, it's mm -hmm. not transaction A leads to transaction B and all of a sudden somebody makes some money, whether it's right. a percentage point or, you know, some kind of markup or some business to business trend. It's not no longer a equals, you know, customer a shops at place B and money is exchanged today. Customer a sees something on Insta, right? They message their friend on it and then on Facebook. And then later on, you know, some other platform, somebody makes a video and then you, you hear about it and then, Maybe you see it. And then finally through A goes to J and L and then F and then all the way to Y back to B and a sale is made. By that time, that connection is no longer relevant, right? It's not, mm -hmm. oh, we talked to customer A and, mm -hmm. and they bought product or service B. Mm -hmm. So I think because things are changing so rapidly and the economy is no longer kind of connected in that way, I think that there is no wrong road, right? There's only learning from those mistakes that you made. So I encourage people to go down the wrong road from time to time. And everybody always makes it, Sheila, like it's going to be mm -hmm. the worst thing ever, right? Oh, we can't do that. It's like, okay, why not? They're like, well, we'll lose our business. It's always like the lat, like, you know, the biggest consequence ever, right? Mm -hmm. And that's rarely the case. You know that. I know that. Yes. I've made some stupid mistakes, like mm -hmm. stupid and not, you know, I didn't all held and break loose, right? It just mm -hmm. kind of got bad, but right. we were able to correct. And I remember when I first started to learn how to manage people, right? I would be like, oh no, I got to micromanage everything, right? Because I can't trust people. And then I started learning, you know, you got to let people go and you got to let them make their own mistakes. And I, I thought, oh, as soon as this person makes their own mistakes, I'm going to lose my business or my career is over or this and that. 
And that's rarely the case. We have to step outside of our comfort zone and allow creativity a moment to take hold. If right. we are so afraid of going down that wrong road or whatever, then we have no nothing to learn from. So I think that there are no wrong roads. It's really about constantly evaluating what's going on. You use secret shoppers. I love that idea. In different businesses, people will use other things. I talk in a book about micro listening, how when you have your blinders on and you're working kind of on the business instead of in the business instead of on it. Right. Um, sometimes micro listening can help. It's when you ask three people what they think. And I, I, I've been at companies where we've spent millions of dollars sending out surveys and right. focus groups and all this stuff. And, you know, you get the same result when you ask three people, right? You ask one exactly. stranger, two people that, you know, it's like you get kind of an idea. So there's all kinds of things that you can do when you've gone down that wrong road, mm. quote unquote. Yeah. Um, but it's all about learning and it's all about moving forward. Exactly. It's like, okay, yeah, that happened next. And, <laughs> and then you just move forward and you're like, and let's make it even better this time. Now we've learned. And you're going to be okay. If exactly. you make mistakes, it'll be fine. You have to believe in the process and creativity, of the process, like any other, you're going to make some mistakes along the way, but the stuff that you learn will be incredibly valuable. Oh yes. Yes. And you know, for me, I, I had this beautiful website that wasn't working properly. So everything, all my business actually was coming from private stuff and, and different leads and, and different things, social media, whatever, and the show. And so not too long ago, the whole entire thing got lost in cyberspace, like disappeared. Oop, it was gone. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, and everybody looked at me on the team and they were like, oh my God, that's like a car right there. And I was like, huh. yeah, but, but it was a broken down uh, car that wasn't getting me where I needed to go. I was doing all this other work. But it a, looked good. Yeah, it looked, it, it was a sexy car. But let me tell you, it didn't go anywhere. And so I was so happy. I said, I feel incredibly peaceful right now because, and now we're like, you know, just finishing rebuilding and, and it'll be up in another week or so. But and, and there's a temporary thing there in between. That's fine. But it was like, oh, that's great. And the way we've done it now is so much better and easier. And I'm not dependent on all these other people that you pay so much money that it wasn't giving results. And so I'm really grateful. And it was it just the biggest sense of peace came over me because it needed to go. It's like you're hanging on to an investment. And that goes with business. You invest in some idea. And you're hanging on to that because I spent so much money on right. this pain, this product, this whatever. And it's like when you can just let that go because it's draining you, then then you're going to have more success and you'll just have this immediate like peace <laughs> and yep. more success shows up. So that's that's kind of. That it's, it's a real life example of what happened. And I was like, wow, I just, I thought I would be really upset right now. And I just, yeah. <laughs> and if you're just the opposite. Exactly. Exactly. So that was, that was a learning. I even surprised myself. Let me, cause you know, there was money involved like a car. Like I said, it was that price. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Hmm. Why do I feel so good about this? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something. Now, um, I'd love to hear about your programs. Um, do you have books and programs or how exactly does it work if somebody wanted to get started working with you? What does that look like? So I'm very easy to find. Uh, my name is Nir Bashan, N-I-R-B-A-S-H-A-N. I'm on social. My website's nirbashan.com. I'm really uh, easy to find, so you can send me an email. Uh, I do keynotes. I do a lot of keynotes. I do a lot of workshops with different groups and some consulting with different companies. Um, I generally get called in when there's a sales problem. Mm. Oh, great. You know, near, come in, help us with sales or whatever. And, you know, that's rarely the issue. It's usually somewhere else in the, in the company. Um, I have a process called the concept, the idea and the execution. Mm -hmm. It's the way to break down any problem that happens in your career or in your business and it allows you to manufacture creativity at will. A lot mm -hmm. of people tell me, Nir, I'm not a creative person. I'm like, get a pen and a paper. I'll make you creative in two minutes, uh -huh. right? And, and it's really all about, you know, identifying the concept of your product, service, your business, career, 
identifying the middle level view and then identifying the specific view, which I call the execution. That's like your SKU or your product mm -hmm. or service. And then you circle it, you write it down, and then you do kind of a word association with it. You come up with different ideas. I've seen the least creative people on earth yeah. just, you know, fill up with joy after they realize that that's it. That's how I do it. That's so simple. And I talk about it on my book. There's some stuff on my website. I give a lot of stuff out for free. Um, so if you go on my website, click on media, there's, I don't know, maybe five, six hours of videos on there. I'm all about giving stuff away, giving stuff back, helping people become creative. You can spend time on my website and get really creative. You can uh, get my book. It's available at uh, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all the bookstores have it in the U S and you can literally learn how to be become creative in a, in a couple hours. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you again, um, Nir, for being a guest on the show and for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. Volume two, dear Sheila, I am feeling extremely betrayed and confused. I have been a faithful wife married to the same man for 12 years with no children yet. I went on a two week business trip with my coworkers and had trouble reaching my spouse. Upon returning, I was greeted at the airport with a peck on the cheek. And after continuously trying to become intimate with my husband, he seemed very distant. He finally told me that while I was traveling, he had a one night stand in the mountains with some lady he met at a bar. My husband promised that it was over and that fling meant nothing. He just drank too much and things got out of hand. Later that month, I found out my husband was continuing to have a relationship with his one night stand. After 12 years, should I give him another chance because we have been considering having children? Am I too untrusting? Am I too old to start looking for another relationship? Was this his first offense? Signed, Betrayed and Confused. Dear Betrayed and Confused, I think it's beautiful that you have so much integrity and love for your husband that you're willing to work things out and that is honorable. However, the most important thing for you is also self-love. Put yourself in the equation and decide when you're willing to stay and when you need to go. You may need to do a relationship reboot or get with a couples therapist. Now this requires two people. So you have to find out, is your guy willing to show up for you or is he already out? That's a big question that needs to be answered and that has nothing to do with you. Uh, a lot of times when situations like this happen, whether it's to the man or the woman, and there's um, somebody cheating, the situation is that the person that was cheated on feels like they did something wrong. And yes, there are two people in a relationship, but there also is the, the reality that sometimes it has very little to do with them. So you need to give the options to the other person. In this case, it's your husband. But then you need to decide if he's not willing to go through and get help you need to decide to then get out of the relationship because that's best for you. As far as having a child, bringing a child into a relationship that's not really solid right now would be the worst thing to do to a child and very unfair. So the best thing to do is get yourself solid, love yourself through this, either get therapy or get out, and then you will find somebody either rebuild your relationship and when you're solid, then have a child, or you'll find somebody else and at some point have a child in a solid relationship. And that would be my, my best advice on this. Thank you for listening to Dear Sheila. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today I have a couple of announcements. First, I would like to hear from you. That's right. I would love to hear from you. 
to be honest. I want to know what your breakthrough is, what your reboot is, how are you reinventing and rebooting your life? What shows would you like to hear more of? What information do you need to help you get back on track this year? And to do that, the best way to connect with me is actually through my new YouTube channel, and that is Sheila Mack Show on YouTube. And there you can see past recordings, and you can also see other um, information and shares that I have. And I would love for you to share in the comments there what you're needing more of and what you're rebooting this year and how we can help you get back on track. Hello and welcome to another live episode edition of the Ordinary People Doing Extraordinary Things podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Roberts, and today I have Miss Sheila Mack. She is a coach and she is an author of her new book, which is called Bootstraps and Bra Straps, The Formula to Go from Rock Bottom Back into Action in Any Situation. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I just am so glad to be on and share about this during this time. Yes. You know, I um, was reading your book and I'd love for us to kind of start in the beginning of your story. And you come from a divorced home. You lived with your grandparents and your mom for a while. You also were in foster care for a while. I'd love for you to take us back kind of, you know, under the age of 18. Uh, what life was like for you at that point? Wow, <laughs> life was very interesting. So my parents, I think they got divorced when I was two or three. My first language was Spanish. And when I moved in with my grandparents, I was slapped every time I spoke Spanish. And so I had to learn English. And I remember translating from Spanish to English to be able to speak and being afraid to share my voice, which is really interesting because now I do a lot of sharing. <laughs> and so that was the beginning. and. Uh, I had incredible experiences. I ended up going from home to home. So sometimes I was with one set of grandparents, the other set of grandparents, with different family members, friends, uh, going throughout. And there was some abuse that happened, um, which happens to, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's like 70, 80% of people have had some form of abuse by the time they're 18. So you're not alone if you've gone through something for sure. And for me, it was very violent. And at one point I was at a home that my mother was visiting and <laughs> she was like, you gotta go, you gotta get out because it's so dangerous. Pets were being killed. I was being abused terribly. And so I left. And one of the things that happened before that, that stuck in my mind all the years later was my my grandmother on one side, She she had a group of very incredible women. They were all stoic older women, I don't know, 70s, 80s, maybe they were younger because I was, you know, five or something. And they would get together and have coffee and tea and they would discuss what they went through in their life. So one lady had lost her entire family, brothers, sisters, and parents in a concentration camp. Another lady, her and her husband escaped a country to come to this country. They didn't speak English and they left every single thing. They didn't have a penny. And another lady, she lost her husband and she owned a Greek restaurant. It was a very famous Greek restaurant in LA over the years, but it was back in the day when everybody was against a woman running a business. So she had to really step up and own her her strength and say, no, I'm going to do this. I got this. I can do it. And so these were the type of people that I heard these, these living history stories from. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder what my adventure is going to be. And I could see that life has waves. It doesn't matter where you're planted, you know, whatever it is, you're going to go through something and to get to, to that beautiful place. And so it's like, how do you show up? in everything that makes a difference. So I carried those those beautiful stories with me. Uh, I did end up, that time that my mother told me, you know, you gotta get out, it was very violent. Like once I was knocked out and didn't wake up until the next day, that kind of thing. And so, you know, but you're little, you don't know the difference because mm -hmm. that's what you're living, you know, you don't have much control when you're little. My career got taken out. How do I reinvent my work life? Dear Sheila, after dedicating my time and life to a company this year, after 22 years, my employer went out of business. Now I'm struggling to start over again, reinvent my life and figure out how to step into a similar career. 
I'm very qualified to get close to retirement age, and it seems impossible to find any wage that matches my experience. My question is, what can I do at the age of 53 to restart in the work world while not burning out? Signed, Jobless at 50-something. Dear Jobless at 50-something, This is definitely the time for rebooting and reinventing your career and life on your terms. Often in the case of having to start over in a career, some reinvention is necessary. With your experience and connections in the field, you can use this time as an opportunity to design your work and life. Let's run this situation through the Boots formula. Throughout life, one can find themselves facing a difficult situation that often catches them by surprise. Over the years, I saw the patterns in all the times I've had to reboot, and in how I've helped my friends and clients get through a hard time and quickly back into action. Ultimately, I came up with the Boots formula. The B in the Boots formula is for being. It is about who you are being and all you are doing and who you need to be in this situation. You are going to have to be authentic and creative with how you design your new work life. At this point in your career, you may be the exact person to advise and help a new business get started. Write out a perfect day at your new dream job. What would that day look like? Would you be an advisor in a similar position or an entrepreneur? Who are you being in this vision? Being honest about who you must be in your search is key. The O in the Boots formula is for orientation. To get the outcomes you desire, you must be honest here. It is not better than it is, nor is it worse than it is. It simply is what it is. Make a list of your resources. Who do you know in the industry, similar industries, and what are your former co-workers doing? Again, be really honest about your outcomes, the outcomes you want. The next O in the Boots formula is for order of operations. Now that you know who you need to be and your orientation, you can decide in which order you must do things. You may need to take on part-time work. Be okay with that and proud of yourself for moving forward. If you do take an in-between position, do not stop applying to the dream job. In the long run, the order in which you do things is going to really drive your results. The T in the Boots formula is for thinking. This is where your mindset comes in. Stop waiting for the perfect new position to show up before you're happier. Choose to live in a grateful and happy state now and in each step in this process. When you go in for interviews or build your own company, your new employer or client will feel your energy. Be so proud of yourself for stepping up and designing your new work life. You will find as you choose your happiness now and express your truth, and essence, the position that you are seeking will find you. The S in the Boots formula is for stepping up. This is the part that puts all the other pieces you have planned into place and gets you and your work life back into action. The time is now for us to collectively work together to rebuild this year. My hope is that this video series and my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, helps. In my book and on my website, I provide plenty of free resources for anyone dealing with a rock bottom situation to reinvent and reboot their business and personal life. If you have a question for Dear Sheila, message me at www.sheilamack.com. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. In each person's lifetime, there will be a series of waves of rock bottom events These times are when your identity needs a reboot. These are the sacred and historic times that offer you a chance to reinvent and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I hope that your life is always blessed and that you will never need a guide. However, if you need help, accountability, community, and connection, along with a rock-solid reboot plan, then my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, will be like having me by your side. It is now available on Audible, Amazon, Kindle, and includes a free mini online course, meditation, plus 11 additional guided application workbooks. Grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action. Bootstraps and bra straps now available on Amazon.
Audible, and wherever fine books are sold. And now a message from our sponsor.